We have this time participants from India primarily and from New Zealand, Australia, Japan, Germany, Romania. <clears throat> so generally our webinars have always been more international focus with participants from all over the world and this is the first time we are doing something at India time for Indian participants on a Sunday morning so that more people can <clears throat> join. If you have to communicate to us, if you have to interact and put up a question, <clears throat> you can use the chat window to your left hand side to put in your questions and we'll try to answer them. And the recording will be up there online for all to see by today evening. So we can use this event to be, we can use this event's uh, recording to share with everybody else, whoever has not been able to attend the class today. Maria, we were looking at some pictures of Tiger 10 m and trying to live those memories that we all spent time together a year and a half ago at the seminar in India in the jungle. Hello Artyom, good to see you online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Dr. Ashish. I this guy, this initiative that we have taken up, and we have been doing this free talk and uploading it for students for the past maybe three, four years. You know, we were the ones who started the whole concept of webinars in homeopathy because it's a, one of the easiest. This is one of the easiest way to reach out to people and for people to learn. Yes, Maria, it was fantastic, wasn't it? We enjoyed. And interacting with everybody, looking at cases, and going to the jungle was definitely a good experience for all of us at the Tiger 10M seminar. And we were just browsing through the pictures, you know, trying to share it with our friends who want to come this year. And we made a nice bunch of pictures of all of us doing various activities over there. And everybody was very excited to join this event. Yeah. So I think we can start. We have we have good amount of people joined already and then the rest can join in. We'll make most of this time. So, good morning everyone, big um, hello and warm welcome. Uh, some of you of course we know you very well through all our teachings all over the country or the world and uh, some of you are also new which is a wonderful thing. Uh, some of you we've recently met, huh? like Artyom was uh, a doctor we recently met in Sofia. Maria is someone we know for a very long time through Germany and who also attended our event in Rajasthan last year. Um, so lots of people, yeah, and I think what we are going to do today is we are going to do a case which explains a little bit of case taking. A little bit of basic, yeah, materia medica and 
coming to the rubrics from the case, which is very, very important because we have some people here who are very new. There are some who are not watching it today online, but have registered. And there's a whole group of students who will be watching later. So it's a good, um, in fact, what we're going to do in this one and a half hours is going to take newcomers through this bridge, yeah, and help them to understand how to come to rubrics, but also not in the uh, old fashioned way. We're going to teach you how to do it more in terms of what is happening today in the world, more in terms of how you would want to see your patients as a, at a much deeper level than what we did 200 years ago. Because every science has changed, every field of medicine has progressed, um, and not just science, you know, trade, transport, politics, everything has progressed over the last 250 years. So homeopaths do not need to be stuck with the last 200 years. We also need to progress because we are treating mankind and we must treat mankind as its problems are in today, in the millennium. Yeah, in the 21st century and not as they were um, 200 years ago. And the, this is the whole focus of this webinar series, to, to take you all and to, um, to, to bring you yeah, to the way homeopathy is being practiced today, the way we have also developed it in the last... Uh, about uh, 16, 17 years in our practice, and also the recent works that we have been doing, which is bringing an integration in homeopathy, bringing a system, yeah, bringing an understanding to all discrete different symptoms, because it's very, very difficult to memorize or to understand individual discrete symptoms. But it's extremely easy and comprehensible and comprehensible and reproducible to understand things as a whole yeah and to see them in our patients and today with our own work and our own practice and research we have come to a point where we have integrated everything. We've integrated the three kingdoms. We found connections between them. When I say the three kingdoms, I mean the plant, mineral, and the animal kingdoms. We found connections. We've integrated case taking in a beautiful way where we understand very deep psychologies of the patient. And so we are at a point where I think we can really help the patient to a very, very deep psychological level and therefore of course help their physical complaints and not just psychological and physical I think we can understand their deep soul patterns and improve their symptoms but also their efficiency and efficacy to a point where they become more successful so we can raise the whole um, we can raise each patient's personality to a level of health, happiness and freedom and therefore if we can help more and more people in that way, we can raise the level of the whole community. It is actually a very, very revolutionary um, concept but also a revolutionary, uh, I would say, movement. If we can all do this and together, you know, lift up the whole environment. And we, we homeopaths are capable of doing that. Yeah, we'll just see this through more and more of the webinars that we will do in this series. But today I'm going to start with the first step and I'm going to discuss a case with you. It just helps you to make this first step into this kind of working. Um, some of you, as I already said, must be well aware of our ways and it will be a nice um, recap. Also, the case is new, so it's always wonderful to see a new case. Yes? Um, okay, 
Now, this is a case that we had seen somewhere in about 2006 or 2007. Yes. Um, so about, uh, I would say, at least eight years ago. Um, it was a case, it's a case of a 60 year old man who came to us with complaints of very severe depression. And he was crying all the time, weeping, mournful and sobbing. Some days he would be simply sobbing and his son had actually sent the father to us because his son was doing well on a homeopathic remedy and you know there's suddenly this change in his father and he thought we must help my father out. Um, he didn't want the father to go to a psychiatrist with this severe clinical depression. This man had never taken the patient. The 60 year old man had never taken any medications in his life. He had never uh, gone to a doctor. He had never fallen sick. He would always been in the best of his health. He was an extremely successful businessman. And um, you know he was at the peak of his career, his business, his life. And everything was just going so perfectly for him. And just in the last few months, he had come down completely collapsing and crashing down. And the family just couldn't accept it. They didn't know what was going wrong with him. And even, even to come to the clinic, it took a whole lot of persuasion because it was, he couldn't understand how he could fall sick. Yeah. And yet all he did for the last few months was get up in the morning, cry and, you know, weep and just complain and complain. And then he would have, now he had started having neurotic symptoms, yeah? So he would have a heart attack kind of a symptom and he would have pain in his chest and sometimes he would feel like his blood pressure was rising. And so he had all these kinds of funny symptoms. Yeah, which were absolutely unexplainable. Now, when he came to us, he was he came in and then he had this cynical smile on his face and he said, you know, I laughed at people who went to doctors. And now today I'm here and I'm, I have come to a doctor who's actually going to help me through my mental problems. So, just see what I have reduced myself to, you know, he had this kind of an expression. So, and all he did at that time was tell me, once he came into the clinic, we started asking him his chief complaint. That's how we start with the case. And just for all the things that I narrated to you, he told me in his chief complaint of how he sobs all day and the day starts with crying, the day ends with crying. He has stopped going to his office. He has stopped taking phone calls. He feels extremely tired. There is absolutely no, uh, no energy. There is no desire. There is no inclination to work even. There's no inclination to party. He used to be such a party animal. There's no inclination to party at all. He has lost the taste of food, so he doesn't enjoy food anymore. And he used to be somebody who loved eating good food and, you know, he was quite, uh, and, and loved tasting different kinds of wines and all of this. And every desire, he says, he said to me, every desire has completely left my mind and body. I'm almost like an empty case. There's nothing inside. So this was the chief complaint. Yeah, dullness, sluggishness. You can take the rubrics. Mind dullness, sluggishness, inactivity. Yes. And absolutely no desire for anything. After all of these symptoms, I thought, of course, this is a case with a mental disease, it's depression. Yeah, there is no physical ailment, but there's a mental complaint. And once I had taken the whole sensation of this complaint, I had to go into the generals and the personality of the patient. And the way Suchindra and I have been working for the last several years is that 
once the chief complaint has been taken into account we then move into the personality of the patient we do not divide the patient into physical generals thermal modalities mentals patient as a person aggravation amelioration this would be just fragmenting the patient into several bits and pieces and though it sounds very analytical and systematic it actually breaks down the essence of the case and breaks down the essence of a person because we are not thermals and chilly and hot and cravings and aversions we are this one human being yeah so we go into the general state of the patient if you can call it after the chief complaint and just take it the way the patient wants to narrate it but keeping into mind that we cover all these um these um criteria that we need for homeopathic case taking so i asked the patient we asked the patient okay this is your chief complaint and this is what you are today but if we just leave all this aside because this is only the last 4 to 5 months of your life tell us a little bit about the kind of person you are of course in this case you have to understand that in such cases not just this case we always go to what were you before the complaint what i mean by such cases cases where the patient tells you that he has changed in the last few months you know there could be a patient who comes in and says there's a death in the family and i have changed or there's a birth of a baby and i have changed or since my marriage i have completely changed so cases where you have the patient changing yeah uh, in the last few months or years and says i was totally different before and i'm totally different now in these cases and they are not they are just on two opposite sides of the same coin we can't change unless we have that other side hidden within us and that other side is only the opposite of the side we have been living for the last few years or decades or whatever yeah so we cannot have anything within us which is not us right but when a person says i have completely changed it's important to know this is one side of the polarity which is the symptom what is the other side of the polarity which was apparently his general personality right so we went went into we went immediately into that and we said okay let's not talk about the crying and the weeping you are weeping all day at home we don't want you to weep in the clinic and tell us everything again we've understood the complaints come to what were you before all of this that vibrant personality that you keep talking about let's let's talk about that vibrant personality and that's when he started telling us his story i like to we like to call this word as his or her story yeah because each one of us has a story and it is that story which is responsible for our health and our disease it is that story which is responsible for our death and our life it is that story which is responsible for our success and our failures and though we call it a story yeah his or her story it's actually a pattern a deep pattern which is coming out from our dna's it's an energetic pattern which what's already almost decided when we were born and then it has various shades it has various clothes over it yeah which is the symptoms the delusions the emotions these are just coverings or clothes over that deep inner pattern and as we understand all these clothes and coverings and 
take them off layer by layer and go deep into the patient then we understand that deep pattern and then find a rubric for that deep pattern yeah so let's go now into all this story his story he says i have a business i have a huge business and not just one but several companies all over the country and i am an extremely indulgent person i need to know every detail of everything happening in my factories and my company where the payments have gone have the accounts been settled have the uh, the source material been obtained i want to know everything and i'm on the top of everything and he kept saying this again and again he says i want to know it immediately i don't delay i don't delay a payment i don't delay a delivery i don't delay an order i do not like when there is a delay when my stuff is coming into the factories when the source material is being brought delays is something i cannot handle at all and all these years in my life i have never delayed anything and he says my life has always been full of joy and recently all this joy has been robbed away from me so we stopped him and we said let's not go back to the bad period we're talking of the good period let's stay with that and he said joy i today you can tell me that i'm a dead man walking because joy is not there in my life this joy was so important the joy of making success the joy of making a new deal cracking a new deal the joy of dressing up even and you know for a 60 year old man that he had come to the clinic he had very vibrant bright colored clothes i would almost say but it looked good on him he he didn't look awkward at all but he could carry off such young youthful clothing huh in a in a very comfortable manner his his style was very youthful and yet he was very comfortable in it also for a 60 year old man he looked very very young yeah like he, he was somebody who was really living his life he looked some i mean he could easily look at least 10 to 15 years younger not 15 but at least 10 years younger than his age um he said he then further told me i said just be you know sachindra and i just kept saying explain this you were a man full of joy you love doing what you did just go on and explain more and more about it <clears throat> and he said i live life king size i spend money i party a lot i go on vacations i buy new things i have a lot of passions in my life people would often talk about me just look at this man he's so happy even at this age he wears such trendy clothes and also that i could afford everything but today i don't shop i don't want to party i don't want to go on a vacation i don't want to buy a new shoe for the last 5 6 year months my shoes have torn but i haven't bought a new shoe everything is destroyed and we said yes we will come back to the destruction first let's come back to let's go into the things you like to do and then he says oh i would go to a lot of bollywood parties he's somebody who's invited because he um puts in a lot of money he in a lot of money with various ventures and the indian movies is one such venture that he invests his money in and so often he's invited to these very fancy bollywood parties and he said oh i love going to those parties and i could go all night to a party return at 4 am in the night yeah and still be so full of energy because the next morning at 6 i had to get back 
to my business and there was a new um, there was a new delivery coming there was some ship there was some cargo that was coming into town and delivering the things that i had ordered so just that two hours of sleep would be enough for me and i would get back to work at six in the morning because i as a ceo of the company i had to be there to see what is coming to see if my deliveries come and he said just that excitement of going to the party in the night but coming home and then uh, uh, cracking this deal or uh, finding out that all the deliver all the um, things i had ordered for have been delivered all this would bring such joy to me i would wake up in the morning 6 in the morning i would be in the office before everybody else because i wanted to wait for that cargo he said and then if i had cracked a very good deal and that evening if i would go into uh, if i would on the way back home if i would be coming with my son and um i would ask my son do you want to stop by a car showroom and just see some cars and they would do that as a fun thing you know you could do it as a fun thing and he said i would go in and then my son would say oh that's the car i really like papa and i would say mm -hmm. okay good the next day the car would have been ordered and it would be standing at the doorstep and my son would look at the car and say are you crazy did we just order this car and he said yes of course what's crazy about it you wanted it yesterday you have it today i don't like to wait if you ask for something you have it if i ask for something i get it and then he said i work for things it's not that i only spend my passion is also working so if i have cracked a deal if i have got into a new venture i am also passionate about this new venture and i will work hard and i will delegate the job and i will get everybody around to finish it up so the passion we could see in this man was almost like a overwhelming phenomena in every sphere of his life yeah this was his story that though he was successful he just enjoyed working partying spending cracking deals he enjoyed doing everything and it was very important for him to do these things and he said just the thought of all this was so amazing i was so full of life so vivacious i have only one motto in my life and that is live life to the fullest i have so many ideas that come into my mind and then it's not just an idea the next day i will come up with a proper concrete plan and i will i will um oh how do you say i will put it into action yeah and i always have the other motto live life to the fullest spend money but the other important thing is earn more than you spend if you spend and not earn you will fall in the ditch so i earn and i earn more than i spend what we could see is that he was not somebody who was just um how would we say um just spending he was not somebody who was only having fun in his life fun was important joy was important parting was important new ideas have to come into his mind that was important but yeah what was important was that he has to even work with that passion so it was it was this passion to work to create to you know have more business or whatever which was like the uh, crux of the case yeah and this is how and this is how he has lived his life and it's so interesting that in the last 4 to 5 months he has lost his passion so something must have happened for him to go on the other side or for him to tip to the other side but now you can see very clearly that this other side 
or that this fact that he has become a dead man or he has lost his passion is the same as having passion. It's just the opposite side. So this is what I meant by saying that our deep pattern remains the same. That never changes. That is what we were born with. Yeah, your DNA. Yeah, and so his deep pattern underneath his story is that of immense work and passion and activity and desire. Desire to do good things, desire to live life, desire to enjoy. He could be on one side someday, which is living those passions, which would be the successful side. Today he's on the other side, which is not having those passions, not having that brightness, not having that vivaciousness. When we look at the rubric, yeah, we would go to either one of these. Or try to see that both of these were present. Both of these are present. Yeah. Because both of these are two opposite sides of the same pattern of passion. Of that drive. Yeah. Or that drill. Uh, the, not drill. The thrill. Yeah. To work and to play and to even exist. The thrill to just exist. So, we go a little further into the case. Um, he says, uh, where was I? Yeah, I said, tell us a little bit more. Live life king size. Just tell us a little bit more about it. And he says, I live life king size. I tell my son. So the, the case is really testing um, all our capacity and our passion to go ahead. Yes, absolutely testing my passion. Okay, good. I was telling you that we clearly understood the central core energetic pattern of this person, that there is this desire to do things, and there's a desire to enjoy, there's this passion, he is in awe of pain. Uh, uh, his mind is full of an energy to go ahead, and then there's the positive side to it where he does, and there's the failed side to it where he hasn't been doing for the last 35 months, and my Next step in the case is to find out why or what it came from one side to the other. Yeah, what made this transition or what caused this transition from the positive to the negative side. I would also like to at this point tell you something very, very important, which has been the last few years of our personal work, so children and mine, and we feel that every chief complaint precipitates after a certain strong emotional causative factor. And having undergone understood this, we have been able to bring it out and elicit it in every single case. And when we get that positive factor, we kind of explains the whole story so beautifully. And we have been doing this over and over again in the last few years. But let's come back to this case. We said, so what happened about four to five months ago? Yeah, anything, it could be a positive, it could be negative. It doesn't have to be negative, positive factor. It could be just something that caused this transition. So we said, tell us what happened. Just tell us your life situation in the last few months. Or not just the last few months, the whole last year. What was happening in your life? 
what was going on. Tell us a little bit about it. And he said, last year, my son, now he is 21, and he came into the business with me. And he wanted to start his own venture within my group of companies. And I was super excited. I have only one son, and I want him to take over my entire business when I retire. And we charted out a whole plan. I love making these plans, and I love seeing them materialize. So we charted this whole plan of how he would start with the, the new venture, of what will be the deals we will crash, what will be the targets we achieve, and how we will completely internationalize our brand. And he said, what happened is, my son went abroad. And he went abroad to, uh, to work on these deals and to meet the people and to, to create license and make all these, um, to make all these uh, connections with various companies. And he was my face in the world. And when he went there, and you see how I am, I want the day to be packed immediately. I want delivery to be done immediately. And I was hoping in the next two months when my son comes back, we will have a new venture. We will, we will have done so much. And this is how all my life has been. But he said, what happened is my son didn't like living there at all. He has often been abroad for holidays, which is a completely different thing. This time when he went, he was on work. And um, he, he couldn't manage to crack the deals. And um, he had also hired and rented out an apartment. And he couldn't manage to, you know, because you can't live in hotels for three to four months. So he rented out a very nice apartment, and I had spent so much of money on it. And but he still had to get his groceries, and he still had to do all of this. Because in India, I have about twenty servants under me, you know, who does everything. So my son looks like a king here. When he went abroad, he had to do most of the things himself, and he was completely dejected. So he couldn't crack the beans. He couldn't uh, go ahead with uh, the. Um, he couldn't work anymore. He couldn't do anything. And he came back home. He came back home, and he said he came back in one month, and he said, uh, "You know what, Papa? This is not going to work. I'm not going to be. I don't think we can." go ahead with this venture. And he said, last year, this was what happened. He went there, in a month or two, he came back, and this was the first time in my 60 years I have ever received a setback. For me, everything goes in one direction, and that's four. And this time, when my son came back, he said, Papa, we can't do this. I can't, we can't have this. And for the first time, the things did not work out. Things did not happen the way I had expected them to happen. And that was my first setback. And that's what he did. You know, that was my first setback. And after that, in the next three months, I don't know what happened. I just started to cry and I started to weep and I stopped going to office. Suddenly, I have changed into this other man. And I said, what was your feeling when your son came back home? And he said, that was, that was my thing, that it's not happening according to my plan. And that for the first time, it's not going ahead according to the way I had decided. He then gave me an example. He said, it could be even something as simple as a newspaper. I love watching cricket. I love reading the newspaper. And even if there's a match between India and Pakistan, or India and Sri Lanka, I'm talking of cricket matches in India, 
or India versus India and whatever. He says, I finished up all my work. I finished all my deeds and I put all songs off the hook because I said, this is my time to enjoy the match, the cricket match. And I will sit in front of the television and enjoy three to four hours of that match. And this is the kind of person that every morning I must read my newspaper. So the first thing I get up in the morning, I, you know, I, I'm already fumbling and looking for my spectacles. Then we'll pick up my spectacles, put them on, and then the first thing I do is I go to my living room and I look for the newspaper. And if one day the newspaper has not been delivered, I create a hell in the house or hell breaks loose. I will get all my servants, my wives, everybody around. I will move them and jostle them and I want the newspaper now. I want the newspaper. He almost becomes a little child. And I want it now. Bring it to me now. And that's what I want right away. And you have to get it. And somehow in the next half an hour, the family has to get me my newspaper. If they don't, it's almost as if I've lost my life. So you see, he has such high levels of passion where he must get something. He goes for it. But if he doesn't get it, be it a newspaper, be it a cricket match, or be it a business deal, he comes down completely collapsed, like a dead person. Every time he says that, you know, the other side is, I'm dead. It's a shock. I, you know, life is gone. If I go to this newspaper, I'm almost dead. Yeah? And again, it's the same thing. Now that we had understood the whole case, yeah? We realize that this is his main story, this is his pattern to go for things, but then comes a time when if it doesn't happen, which is what happened with his son, he goes into the office, which is complete darkness. Then he can't think, he can't work, he's almost dead. The, this is the crux of his pattern, and the remedy must cover this pattern to be able to help him. Now we look at the Two bits of the case. A couple of rubrics that we took for this case is mind, activity, desire for. Mind, activity, desire for, and it has several remedies, and some of them are. Um, Mentha, Oregano, Chukriya Maram Viru. So that is the first one we took. The second one that we took was mind, dullness, sluggishness, difficulty of thinking and comprehending. Because you know he goes to the complete opposite, which is dullness. And it has several remedies again. Um, hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, because I'm hard to get in. Yeah. Okay. So, then I took industrious mania for work. Then I took mind rush and flow of thoughts. Do you write this one? Mind mirth, hilarity, liveliness. And then I took another very interesting thing. This would be industrious mania for work. You put that. No, what I tell you. Okay. And then this is the last one that I took, which is 
So while the other remedies in the family also have this passion, this desire, this thrill to do things, it's mentha pipareta which has this desire but is also hurried and impatient to fulfill this desire. You see that? Because the others in the family do not have dispatches quickly or finishes the work quickly. The other remedies do not have impatient and hurry. So the common theme to the entire mint family could be this passion, could be this thing. Yeah? But the uncommon or not the, the peculiar thing for mentha within the family is to have an impatience to achieve this passion or to um, or uh, to materialize this passion or to put this passion into action. I hope you understand this. Yeah. Now what you understand from the root box is that I mean the rubrics are the cooking symptoms and therefore they give you the, the fundamental threads in the case or they give you the fundamental characteristics of the patient. That is what the rubrics do but they do not do anything beyond that. They do not be the story. But our patients are not rubrics, our patients are the story. Yeah. And this is a problem I had in the very beginning years of my practice. And then also when we study this, study this as students, was that it's very difficult to understand and to remember and to reproduce discrete rubrics. Because we as humans are not discrete rubrics. But taking those fundamental rubrics, we can create we can create would be a wrong word. We can understand a story that is created of those things. And that story is what our patients are. The rubrics are almost like that energetic pattern. But around it is the entire story of how the pattern unfolds. Yeah. Um, about in 2000, in the millennium, because we are also very, very closely working with and associated and are part of the sensation method, yeah, we have contributed a lot to the sensation method in various ways. This was also in 2000, the time when we were working with different plants and um, Dr. Shankaran came up with this sensation method of um, plants and plant families. Yeah, uh, where a single plant family, because they are all part of one kingdom, uh, uh, a part of one family, would have a common theme, and he derived these themes from the common rubrics of that family, and then within the family, he tried to differentiate different plants. This was also the time when we were working with animals. Yeah, so we were seeing plants, we were trying to work with a lot of animal remedies and mineral remedies. And what we realized through our work is that in all our remedies, in all of our family, uh, groups of remedies, there is some kind of a story and there is also some kind of a um, pattern. Yeah. And if we understand that pattern, we will be able to understand our patients and use so many different remedies with so much more precision. Now what is this pattern? Coming down to that. Yeah. What we realized over years is that, now when you look at nature, let's forget our realization, just look at nature. Everything in nature works with a system, works with a pattern. I just keep hearing this constantly. Ding, ding, ding. So, can you hear me? Are you with me? 
everyone, just say a quick yes and then I go ahead. Okay. Everything works with a pattern and also everything can be classified in a pattern, which is what all scientists up till now have done. You have classification of minerals, you have classification of plants, you have classification of animals. Within the classification of animals, you have further classification of the vertebrates and invertebrates. Within vertebrates and invertebrates, you have further classification of mammals, fish, or invertebrates, you have mollusks, crustaceans, things like that. Within plant family, once you come into the plant kingdom, you have further classification into gymnosperms and angiosperms. And then within the angiosperms, you have the monoparts and the dipods, and so on and so forth. In the mineral kingdom, you have the periodic table, you have the six, uh, the seven rows, you have the columns, and within the, then you have the organic chemistry, the inorganic chemistry. Within organic chem chemistry, you have the aliphatic compounds, the aromatic compounds. Everything is broken up into single pieces. And these individual pieces have something which is individual about them. But they also have something which is common to the larger group they belong to. Just as in this case, the mentha has something in common to the other main remedies, which is the passion. But it also has something different from the other means, which is the impatience and the hurriedness and the, the impulsiveness of the passion. Yeah? And if we could understand each kingdom, their common patterns, and within the kingdom, differentiate the uncommon or the peculiar patterns, we could create an entire map and use various remedies through this map. For example, the map here is that passion is the thing common to the mint family and within the passion from Tucrium, Origanum, Lacopus, Osinum, all the other remedies is mentha which is differentiated from the rest of the remedies because it has this impatience. Yeah. And what has been the last, in the last 10 years almost, yeah, working with um, various tools and working very closely and also being part of the sensation method and working over the periodic table and things like that, we have now created a pattern which is, I would say, uh, not pattern, a map. Yeah, of the minerals, plants, and animals in our own. Yeah, and we've also found our own easy understanding to all the three kingdoms. And recently, we are integrating the three kingdoms, which means what remedy in the plant kingdom corresponds to what remedy in the mineral kingdom and corresponds to what remedy in the animal kingdom. There's a kind of a connection between all of these three and mind you, though we discovered this for ourselves only in the last six to seven years, we have gone back into the um, uh, uh, into the old literature and found out that Ken, yeah, Alan, Harry, they all talked about a certain pattern existing. And Ken also talked about the three kingdoms connecting to each other. So I'm not going to introduce the map to you today. It's very early. You will have to be with us for a few more webinars to get the whole map. Or also maybe keep sending us emails and we can explain to you or we can or put you in touch with our other newsletters and webinars where you can slowly come to that level. But I want to explain to you something a little more interesting that I'll connect to mentha to, an, uh, to a mineral. Yeah? Now, when you look at the mint family, let's come to the mentha again. He comes back to mentha vipreta. Uh, he received mentha vipreta in 200 potency because he was in depression. He was very, very severely crying and in depression. And this depression means a 200 potency. He, he received it frequently 
Yeah, once I think uh, we gave the first clauses was once in a month. Yeah, and then and he responded to it so well that you know within a few months he was just back to his normal beaming, enjoying, and his you know fully vibrant self. However, there was one change when he came back. When he bounced back, he said, I don't get so excited as I used to earlier. And we said, is that good for you or is it bad for you? And he said, you know what I realized? Earlier I used to get over excited. And there was always that fear to the other side and get collapsed and completely to the negative side. Today I feel a little more balanced. I am neither too excited. I am not so hungry. I am not such a pain to my wife in the morning if I don't get the newspaper. And I also don't fear that I will go to the other side of feeling totally lost and depressed. So you see how this connection is, where, where he improves not only in his symptoms, but his entire state, which had that pathological compulsion of passion, reduces. Now, this was a little bit about the follow-up. Just coming back to Mimha Keparita. If you look at the plants, we have put all the animals and made a chart of them into six or uh, seven stages of human development, which corresponds to the mineral seven stages of human development. This is our new work. And the plants in the seven stages of development as well. So the human goes through seven stages of human development from birth to death. The animals go through seven stages of human development. The whole plant kingdom can be broken into the same seven stages and the whole animal kingdom. And so you see how you can connect the seven stages to the various kingdoms. Yeah, just to tell you that mentha or the mentha belongs to the laminacy family. Yeah? We call it in layman terms a mentha. Now the laminacy family, when you look at the whole classification of plants, is a very, very well developed, highly evolved family of plants. And, and if you try to now put the laminacy family within the six stages of the uh, seven rows of human development and the seven uh, so the seven rows of human development or the seven levels of human development, it comes in the sixth level of development of human. And what is the sixth level of development of human? Very similar to the sixth level of development in the periodic table, it is an extremely powerful stage where a person achieves a lot. He wants to be a king. He wants to be a leader. He wants to um, uh, own companies. He wants to be a king. He wants to have a great amount of wealth, power, um, knowledge. And he kind of wants to be like a super success. Yeah, that is the sixth level of human development. And that's what this man does. Yeah, he had this passion. Remember, I kept telling you every time, his passion was not just to watch telly or spend money, but his passion was to also work that efficiently, earn more money, get into the business, have the contacts. So he was at a very, very high level of his human development. Yeah, and was compulsively pushing himself to remain there. Now, that is the level of the Laminacy family. So very often with the mint, and then just one more thing, the way the mint family sees it, once they achieve it, they feel super thrilled. Or even in the process of achieving it, the passion, the thrill, the energy, the amount of um, drive that they have, yeah, is very, very high. So it's the passion to achieve. This is the theme of the mint family. It's the passion to create, the passion to, uh, to uh, acquire. Yeah? It could even be spiritual knowledge. But they want to reach at a very high level. And they have that 
passion to do it. So it's not just success, but it's passion for success. And therefore, he feels everything passionately, whether it's reading a newspaper or whether it's um, cracking a deal. And when you look at all the herbs, the herbs, when we put them in our food, they improve the quality of food and bring out this passion in us. Yeah? When you have food that is bland, it doesn't have passion. But when you put basil and when you put mint and when you put oregano, you create a very passionate dish. You create a dish which is so interesting and it gives you this wow. Yeah? But with the wow feeling, there is a lot of desire to achieve and there's a lot of hard work. But the hard work comes with enjoyment. So the other important thing with the mint family is tremendous enjoyment. Yeah? Um, enjoyment to work. They don't just work. They enjoy their work. They enjoy their life and they enjoy their work. Yeah? Um, and therefore the mint family would correspond to metals. Yeah, or would be similar to metals like aluminum, yeah, tungsten. I'm talking of the heavy metals of the periodic table, which are in the sixth form. Like you have mercury, then you have platina, uh, osmium, aurum, gold. Yeah, this man was like a leader. That's what he says. I'm like a king. And what do you think of aurum? As the king. Now, another interesting thing is you have baraita and you have plumbum in the sixth floor as well, which have the talents. So, within the sixth level of development, when you don't achieve, the opposite side is complete death and dullness and stupidity. And so, you have both those at the same time in the same level of development and in the same way. I think this much at the moment would be enough to introduce you to this idea. But uh, there is so much more in-depth work on this of all the three kingdoms and their integration. And uh, you can keep following us up and learn more about this whole map. Sorry, just give me a second. So, a quick recall or a quick refocus into the technique of case taking that we use time and again in our world is that you never disregard or you never discredit anything being spoken by the patient. Every bit, every story narrated by the patient is useful in understanding the individual. At times when the patient speaks a lot or speaks very little, what you need to observe is the pattern that is being presented, the language that is being used, the sequence in which the words are coming, because all of these help you to build up the personality of the individual. Not every patient is going to be as exciting and stimulating with the aha moment like the one that we shared with you today. But what will be sure for every patient is that each one has its own story each one will have its own way of speaking about it. So observe the language, listen to the language, and if you can't understand what's being spoken by the patient, ask him to continue and try to observe the pattern that comes repeatedly in the case. If you are able to do that, a major portion of your case is solved because you can understand the crux of the individual and the crux of the case. So you can start implementing that in your work right from today and see how it opens up and how it unfolds. Bhavish and I will be continuing these series of free webinars every few weeks and all of you will be updated through email the next webinar that we want to do and the topic that we want to share with you. Feel free to share this webinar link, the video link which you all will get very soon with as many people as possible so that people can make their prescriptions more grounded and get much more successful results 
so that the science progresses and the students progress too. So make use of this opportunity and these teachings to spread the word further. If you have any queries, email us back. You have been getting the mails from our webinar account. You can email there or you can email the clinic and the clinic will be very happy to respond to those replies and queries and help you out. Yeah. So all the best and I hope all of you enjoyed the talk so far. Thank you.